I'm trying to figure out all this stuff at one time. Yeah, but it's awesome. You made the jump. Well, uh, I'm trying to figure out. I, I, I truly believe that the Internet's going to go to straight videos or or sort of a bot podcast type thing. So. Yes. And I, I think i got to get get my technology in line, right? Yep. No, I was just curious to see what you're uh... – what you're doing, I've never heard of the blog talk radio. I know you've heard of people doing podcasts and stuff like that. Well, I think the, the problem with the podcast is it's um, – I, I was trying to do podcasts for a while, and uh, it's just not sophisticated. It's just, uh, you know, I have to know so much to do it. And I, I'm not saying that there's not a system out there. I just didn't didn't figure it out. But I – I know some people that are on Blog Talk Radio, and they, they seem to be doing pretty good. So, hey, you're back in Canada, right? Yeah, it's freezing. <laughs> it's, I can't believe it. You think May is warm? Forty-seven. Uh, what's that Celsius? Uh, it's probably about fourteen, fifteen, I think. Okay, yeah, a little, little better than us over here. <laughs> yeah, it's probably better than you, but. <laughs> Yeah. No, I. Uh, it's, uh, but I guess you're looking for the interaction, uh, people calling in and asking questions. That's what probably you, you're, what yeah. you're looking for, right? Yeah. Yes. And they have a. I, they have a system for that. I'm not sure how it works yet. <laughs> yeah. Is there any way to track how many people were were listening to you? Like, um, how many viewers? I guess uh, on that blog talk platform. Well. There is, but see, they got this, what they call the, what do they call that? The freemium. You get the free plan, and then you pay uh -huh. a premium, and you get all the analytics and all this stuff. So. Uh, gotcha, yeah. okay. So I, I'm going to get a free month of the premium, but I don't really want to start it until I get to Ecuador, because it seems like my, I don't know, it seems like my readers think I stopped traveling because I'm in the United States. <laughs> Really? How do you know that? By less emails or something like oh, that? Just less of everything. Less of everything. Uh -huh. As busy it goes, the minute you go home, they think you're finished. Oh, okay. So they like the excitement of you being on the road. Yeah. If Well, it's not that they like the excitement of me being on the road. It's just that they never heard of anybody perpetually traveling, so they assume that I stopped. Oh, okay. You really got to be careful. You really... If I really wanted to play with my, you know, if I was really maneuvering, I wouldn't admit I ever came home and just started <laughs> and start again in a different place. Because the minute I come home, they think I'm finished traveling because they've never heard of anybody continually traveling. It's, okay. It's not even in their brain. So what, what, what percentage are American, your, your visitors? I'm guessing pretty high. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably 80%. 80%. Okay. And I know the percentage of Americans who don't have a passport is pretty high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I guess that, but uh, I forgot to. But mm, it's getting higher all the time because, like, all my nephews now have passports. And, uh, but, you know, I always, when the Europeans say this, you know, they all they had to do, used to be, all they had to do is go, you know, 100 miles and they went to a different country, right? So Yeah, you need, yeah exactly. we got such a big country that you can you know, travel a long time without a passport. That's right, yeah. But, yeah. but I'm always trying to, I, I'm glad, I, what I'm thinking, the um, economic, the tourism in Europe ought to really increase because now instead of going to Mexico and Canada and mm -hmm. Caribbean, they ought to be going to Europe because a lot of people dream about Europe, you know, Americans dream about England and, you know, somehow going back to our roots, right? Right. So now that they hit more have passports, they feel like, hey, this is a ticket to explore more of the world. Yeah, they don't have – there's a threshold value. It's like the countries that don't require a visa have more tourism mm -hmm. than the countries that re – so yeah. if you can – and if an American has a passport, you can just get on a plane and go to, you know, Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Brazil's really crazy. They charge $100 for a visa, I think. And it just kills the tourism. I mean, Brazil's the perfect country for tourists. America. Why, why would they want to create the resistance? I think Argentina's like that too. Because I, I was thinking about like Argentina, and then they're just saying like hundred bucks for the visa, and it's like, what? Why? <laughs> I don't know that. That's new. I never. 
That's a new one to me. That it's possible. I think it's some reciprocal because you know Canada and U.S. charges the Argentinians. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's the excuse uh, that uh, Brazil yeah. reciprocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but um, yeah, no interesting. <laughs> really, that's saying the government wants the money from this application fee more than they care about the economic growth of the country. Yeah. Yeah, because they yeah they don't see the long term effect. You know, the tourist goes in and they spend money. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, I if I had an isolated place, normally the backpackers go in first, and then their mothers come in, and next thing you know, you got a tourist trap, and the backpackers go to the new place. So, ah, okay. So okay. If, you, if you had a hotel, yeah, you know, try to get all the backpackers to come, and then. Slowly, you can upgrade to the their mom and pops. <laughs> gotcha. Sort of like the the arts art community, they they sort of create a little uh, a community, an artsy community. It becomes like trendy, and okay. then and then it becomes popular, and then the artsy people move off to another. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And anything mm -hmm. comes to me, the backpackers were always were not tourists, and some of them are pretty hardcore. But, right. But. It, it's kind of going away now. Backpackers are disappearing that way. But okay, I'm still I'm still a purist. <laughs> <laughs> the, so when you're on the road, do you meet other people who are perpetually traveling, or is that very rare? It's very very rare. Um, yeah. I have. I mean, I'm the guy I'm going to when I'm going down to Ecuador. I'm going to see Bob Winnie. And mm -hmm. he he was traveling perpetually for eight years. Okay. But a lot of the perpetual travelers, the ones after they get out about five years, they start to figure out who I am because they're searching for mm -hmm. people like mine, and then they contact me, and then if we're on the same continent, we sort of drift together. But gotcha. you know, there's there is a lot of hermits, right? Travelers. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. Don't want anything to do with any, and there, there's people that don't want to get near me at all because I might put them on camera. Right, 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 right. Okay, right. So people have different reasons for. Well, there's a lot of reasons. Some of them we don't know what we don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I, I, I just like some the, of these like places. And some of these places I go, what they're, why they're out. <laughs> Yeah, you sort of prelude to it in some of your videos, but don't go into too many details, which which, uh, which is pretty good. I don't really want to know either. Uh, but I, I just love the, the concept of, you know, um, you know, being a citizen of the world, you know, just exploring different parts of it. I mean, sure. in this modern age, you know, we have the opportunity, so why not do it? I'm trying to pick out a cup of coffee. I need some coffee. I'm weak from making that video. <laughs> My mom's got this carriage machine, which is expensive. The little little packets, huh? The little oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> these little things. <laughs> I've been manipulating my sister. So, mom, text me, text text April, Bambi, and Candy to bring more of these things. We're almost out. <laughs> they do. Because <laughs> they're kind of expensive, right? So. Uh, yeah, you'd think it'd be, it'd be cheaper if you buy in uh, like a big bag of, you know, coffee. Grind it yourself and you filter it. Mom's got a mom's got a little thing that you can put inside the thing that's a filter, and you can fill it up with ground coffee. So you could. Okay. Make, it's it's pretty excellent for making one cup of coffee. Yeah. But mm. uh, it's, you know, it's, last thing I need is it's probably got calories in some of these things, right? <laughs> yeah. But, so freezing in Canada. Uh, yeah, it's like as soon as I got here, my back is starting to like, <laughs> and down there for six months, you're like, you just your body is just completely relaxes. Maybe you just, it's just a different state of being. Well, I'm a, I'm having sinus headaches every day. It's raining right now. Rain, okay. It's it. A week ago, I was trying thinking about putting in my air conditioner, and last night I finally. It's it's freezing. It's 47 yeah. degrees, which is I don't know what that. I got this indoor outdoor thermometer. I I'm always wondering what temperature it is. It's got a little yeah. sensor outside, 
but mm -hmm. it won't go. I can't seem to figure out how to get it to go to, if it does, I haven't figured it out, how to get it to go to centigrade. Uh, Strictly an American toy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, all I know is 32 is the zero point, and then 80 sounds pretty nice. <laughs> no, 23 degrees south centigrade is pretty like, yeah. heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very comfortable. So, I, yeah. and I know that 40 degrees centigrade is very hot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's crazy hot. <laughs> yeah, I was in uh, Iraq, and it got up to 40. We, so, were, we were cooking. Yeah, like, see, I, I have a friend who's teaching in, well, who's teaching in Dubai, and he said he's making a lot of money, but he's also having to deal with extreme heat. And I can't, I can't even imagine what it's like. Like, I know what's it's down there in the Caribbean, you know, 30 plus, but I don't know what it's like in the, in the Middle East. <laughs> it's the opposite of Northern Canada. Instead of staying in the house because you're cold, you're staying in the house because you're hot. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Everybody's hiding in air conditioning. Air conditioning, right. The car, the house, the work. No, I, it, it's according to the, the heat here is pretty moist. Where I, mm. I, it was about 37 degrees in Caratoga where I was at. It was pretty nice. It was real hot. Okay. But very dusty, though, so that was a problem. Ah, uh, okay. You sound like you got a cold right now. Just feeling chilly, you know, just a little stuffed up. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's crazy how the weather affects you. And then you don't feel like eating as healthy, you know, like down there, you, you know, you, you get really fresh fruits and vegetables, and you can really just eat, buy a big bag of oranges, have that every morning, and and now it's like I don't even really feel like that as much anymore. <laughs> I'm uh going to leave America another eight pounds heavier. Oh, oh, easily. Yeah, easily. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, my mother likes to cook and so. <laughs> oh, and that too. Yeah. <laughs> I like to eat, but <laughs> getting, I had to cut out the cheese and the ice cream. I think I'm allergic oh. to milk products. Yeah. Yeah. No, dairy is, dairy is huge, huge weight gainer. <clears throat> oh, right. Makes me lethargic. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're wanting help with your uh, financial planning? Is that what you said? Yeah, I guess just to help with, um, like you know, when you're just when you're just a solo person, you're just thinking in your head. Things are bouncing around, and you almost have no accountability. <laughs> no filter. No filter. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean. I sort of know what to do, but I guess it's just sort of having that someone to bounce uh, off of, I, I think is really helpful. And of course, you bounce off of your experience. Sure. Well, so. Americans, one great thing, you know, Skype's been here for I don't know how many years, but Skype has been a windfall for me because I was getting pretty well burned out with talking with new people. Now I can call my mom, I can call my friends at home and, you know, have the, they're not going to go do much with me anyway. They're all married with children, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, it's still nice to talk to them and, yep. and stay in touch and buy yep. trust ideas. But business ideas are really important. To, you know, if you can find somebody, anything I'm doing, I'm always looking for the person that's been doing it for five or eight years. Right. Anybody that's been doing it for a year. Yeah. You know, the, there's two times when businesses go out of business. It's like two years, five years, and 11 years. Okay, two, five, and 11. Interesting. I watched a class on entrepreneurism one time in Indiana University. And this, um, this guy, you know, there's different problems, right? Two years is basically they're just, they're just not good at managing your money. Five, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Five years is like your seven-year itch. They start thinking they're successful and they, all the things that they started out, all the ideas, they don't change and they go out of business. Okay. You got to change, right? You got to adapt with the thing. And then the, yeah. uh, the 11 year one is again, just a, they go back into the, it's all about not, not adapting to the new business, right? Because the business changes, everything changes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like right now, I'm really, you know, the Google AdSense is really, changed a lot and mm. 
now I'm going to this fulfillment by Amazon. So I really, yeah. but I think that's going to be a lot, lot better money in a way. I think we're going to get paid. Uh, yeah, we we'll just we should easily make a lot more money for the amount of advertising. See, this organic or advertising will come off my website. Yes, yeah. So everything you do, all your content is in a way a, a, a funnel to your products. Exactly. Okay. And it's a, a web capturing the people and then leading them to the product to buy the product. And right. The, and the good part is I believe in the product, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm yeah. really hoping I get this backpack finished. If I get a backpack finished, see, you can make, we can make a lot of money and I could then even give it to mm -hmm. like bloggers where they can make like, you know, $50, $75 a backpack. Right, get them to promote. So is it going to be sort of like the, um, the what is it, the MEC Voyager, but bigger? Um, it's going to be bigger. It's going to be 60 liters as opposed to 40 liters. And it's going to be less things on the outside to cap. You know, mm -hmm. there's too many zippers on that, so I got rid of the zippers. Mm -hmm. Zippers break. I got like I I got one my Voyager thing. One side zipper is broken. So okay, uh, it actually broke. See zippers, they you drop the bag and they go pop like that. Okay. So they're supposed to have straps across to them. They really need a strap every to, to never break the zipper. You need a strap about every five inches. Mm. You know, then it compresses across the zipper and takes the pressure off. The pressure, right? Okay. But so it, this one you're working on, it will no longer be um, a carry-on then. No, and but we'll make we'll make you know models two, three, chill, you know daughters, son. I, I, I'm I'm hoping that it's going to be all different levels. And I, I I can do that relatively easy because of the design simplicity. Right, so right. It's really, really simple, but it's it's got it's going to have a secret pocket inside where you can hide your pockets. I'm going to put a flap somewhere where it doesn't look mm -hmm. obvious that you're hiding things in there. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, made uh, made to carry bulk. And I'm, if I can ever get the expansion thing done, we'll make it so that you can carry a small one, carry mm -hmm. it inside, but it would expand to double size. Okay. I've been trying really hard. I think I know how to do it now. And mm -hmm. um, I've got a system figured out. And because people buy stuff, so you need to basically take a carry-on there and a check baggy sack, right? Yeah, yeah. Anybody yeah. who thinks they don't buy something, mm. <laughs> yeah. They always yeah. buy something for some strange reason. Oh yeah, no, and always you generally tend to, to to fill up your bag to the limit. It's very rare. If there's empty space, it, it will get filled. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Jeff, uh, no, Jeff West, and he, he was in Mongolia with me. He says, I bought a really small backpack so I couldn't buy anything, and I, I end up taking a picture of him holding two plastic bags, right? <laughs> Jeff, it won't stop you. <laughs> yeah. Is that, no, it's that, tough. that need to buy, is uh, Yeah. So, so what are like? How do you actually stick to your like? You seem pretty strict on your budget. Like, how do you uh, week in or day in day out, week in week out, month in month out, stick to a, a budget? Well, the easy way is to make sure you, you stick to the, the hotel budget. <laughs> okay, the hotel, the accommodation. Yeah. Then okay. the, the second thing is. Breakfast to me is one dollar and dinner is three dollars. Wow. So to me, when I'm buying breakfast, I'm trying to key in. A, a, my target number is one dollar. Okay. Then at dinner, it would be three dollars. I mean, I. But I'm trying to figure out. You know, usually, if you really, really want to be hardcore about it, just. Uh, Put in your pocket the amount of money that you can spend a day. Okay, okay. Don't physically ha have. You're going to get a beat up when you go over it, right? Yeah, because, you know, like, you know, in Canada, in America, you, know, you have your plastic and you can just, you know, you can just run it up. <laughs> Don't use plastic. <laughs> or your, even just your ATM. Like, I no longer have credit card, you know, but I use that. But, you know, ATM, you still have, if you know you have money in the bank, you, you it's like, 
So you have a number in mind for each event, breakfast, dinner, yep, I got accommodation. It. Um, There's a number in your mind. Yep. Okay. I, I do it even in America. Okay, okay. I mean, they get upset at me. I can go to McDonald's and get a sandwich for a dollar. You know, I can go over to the restaurant here and get eggs, two eggs and a piece of toast for a dollar fifty. But, you know, it's, it's an average, right? Yeah, okay. But I, I end up going to in the United States and Europe and stuff. I'll go to the grocery stores all the time and take things from the shelf. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you can really eat pretty good on $5 a day. I mean, you know, especially vegetables and stuff. It's so cheap in America. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's definite. I mean, I can eat the vegetables and fruit till I'm... Yeah. I, I eat a lot of protein type foods like chicken, tuna, things. <clears throat> I don't uh, eat much of that. And I, I try to stay away from, you know, I try to eat healthy. I uh -huh. eat nuts. I eat a lot of cashews. I always go down to the Dollar General here and buy cashews every day. Okay, okay. So it's like you got to understand. You got to think about the whole picture. And everybody gets keyed in on my budget. Yeah. I just wiped off a month of budget here, right? Oh, okay. I mean, mom's house, no rent. No. Right. So it's all a balance, right? Okay, okay, okay. That means I'm, I got a month in here. I, that means I could spend twenty dollars a day in Europe, right? Gotcha. Okay. And I spend. I try to no no more than four hundred dollars a month on air. Four hundred dollars a month. I mean, if I'm spending four hundred dollars in one month on airfare, I don't feel bad. Ah, okay, I see what you mean. I, I'm not moving that much. It's better to go from coast to coast. Yeah. Meaning you get, you know, you enter the United States in New York and you leave it in Los Angeles. You leave in Thailand and you leave in, you know. Like o over land. But that saves a lot of money. But the budget, the best way to budget really is just to put $10 in your pocket mm -hmm. in cash. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that credit card out of your pocket. Yeah. Like I don't carry my cards with me. I always they're they're right now, they're upstairs in my travel pants. So when you're going around town, you're just carrying cash. Probably. Okay, okay. I want the pain of looking at the money. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's painful yeah, when you see the actual physical <laughs> it's totally different. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I punish myself. Ooh. <laughs> How much? But okay. I also get sticker shock. I mean, there's some things in America that just don't. The restaurant over here is really expensive. You can charge uh, for breakfast. It can cost you nine dollars real easy. Mm. And uh, that's just a ham and cheese omelet with some toast and a cup of coffee. But yeah. one way to save on budgets real quick is to cut out the drink. Oh yeah, yeah. That's easy for me. I don't drink. <clears throat> I I a lot of times don't drink water. I just drink water in restaurants. Yeah. And you know, but everything I do has kind of a budget, a target number in mind. A target. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. So, whatever it is, there's a there's a number in mind. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm when I get in a taxi, I want to spend a dollar, no more than a dollar. That's mm -hmm. why I loved Caratogo. They were twenty cents. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> when Jack okay. 20 cents, life is good. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's there's rules of thumbs on everything, right? There's, mm -hmm. Like if you're going on an airplane and you're only going 150 miles, you might as well take the local transport, right? Well, yeah. By the time you wait three hours at the airport, and you, get another, you don't save any time. Yeah. And then, you know, but after you know about uh, when it, the plane, the, the the road trip is longer than six hours in airplane to reach. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so where do most people fail on budgeting? <laughs> drinking. Drink drinking. Okay. <laughs> That's an easy one. Okay, easy. Okay. Think, uh, there's two different things they do. One mm -hmm. is they think they're on vacation. Mm -hmm. They can't stop thinking they're on vacation. You're on vacation. Okay. It's a, it's a like a treat. Treat treat yourself. Yeah. So they never stop treating themselves. Okay. Okay. And you know, kind of 
a nice feeling to treat yourself. I don't mind. I'm on vacation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll tell people when they're trying to get me to go along with them. I'll say, mm -hmm. I'm not on vacation. I'm, I'm living. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you got these Americans that have to dinner every night. I'm going to dinner every night with my mom. My, my <laughs> So, uh -huh. you know, they just want to go to dinner and they want to do it when they're in Thailand. They want to do it anywhere they want. Anywhere, okay. Okay, so. So, okay. anything else for, for budgeting? Uh, that's, well, you know, I, I. You have to truly believe 100% that you can find a $10 a night room. Okay. And the people that don't believe that never find it. <laughs> they never find it. Okay. So you're persistent and you, you work at it. Yeah, I'm going to go find a ten dollar a ten euro a night room in uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. And I just bought the Lonely Planet so I could help you find it. But I got mm -hmm. it's, it's not that you it's bring that easy. You're really paying with it mostly with sweat equity. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Your time. Yeah, so you're you're paying extra for the room, but you have to do a lot of time, right? Mm hmm, mm -hmm. My friend uh, Craig Hombaker, travelvice.com, he, he traveled for 365 days only staying in uh, couch surfing. Couch surfing? Yep. With in him and his wife and child. Wow. So they went you... couch, they couch surfed the whole year. But, he, but don't you? I think he had to send out like he said about ten ten requests for each location. But how long did that you stay at each place? It can't be more than a week. I know, and that you know you have to. You know he's he's pretty smooth though, and he's a handsome guy, and he's not a you know his wife's beautiful. Okay. So okay. It's just like having a all American couple, you know. Okay, <laughs> like having a reality show in your own home. home this like, <laughs> oh, and he's pretty smooth, so I think he did. But okay, it works for him then. What I'm going to try to do with uh, Bulgaria is I'll probably try to couch surf and say, you know, and if you want, after after a couple of days, I could pay you ten dollars, ten euros a day. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. I see I'll you. Pay. Okay. I'll pay them and say, hey, I'll give you a couple of days free, and I'll give you, after that, I'll pay you $10 a day. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And you go, they like me, and I'll go, hey. Yeah, yeah. But okay. You, got, you know, you got to tell yourself, and I don't think you're going to have any problem doing that, but it's all yeah. about, it's all about <clears throat> charisma in a way, and tr doing mm -hmm. exchanges, and like, yeah. I'm going to make a video here soon, I've been putting, I've been doing all these errands for my mom, right? Mm -hmm. I, I got one video set up. It got too cold. I was hanging something up outside and I had to drill. And I'm gonna show you where I installed this thing. And I said, you know, give me a free room and I'll, I'll repair. You know, do some work. <laughs> some handyman jobs around your house. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just being creative, out thinking outside the box, yeah. and yeah. sticking to that number. There's people that need. <laughs> A strong back, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the idea of giving up an extra bedroom sounds like a good deal. Yeah. Because you know, gotcha. sometimes these people can't figure out. You know, say, "Hey, strong back," and I'll. Uh, I mean, this one girl. What's what's her name? She's doing a lot of house sitting. Mm -hmm. it can be dangerous, but you can. You know, you really, if you pet sit, you can get a house in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I think all the way through the Caribbean, you can house sit. Really. Oh yeah, huh. great place because nobody can afford to live there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so is that just uh, some website for that, or do you have to look locally? What is the name of that girl? House sitting? No, oh, there's there's websites on house sitting. Websites, okay. Huh. Um, but you know, pick out the island you want. Um, I know that in Sosua, where I was at, there was house sitting available. Not right, right. The problem, I, well, I house said and when I was in Soso, I lived in a place for free. Right. I watched the place, but, you know, it was so dangerous, I realized. But if you can get somebody that needs pet sitting or plant sitting, that'd be the thing. 
Petra plant. Okay, so you're there for some purpose, not just to guard the house. Yeah, because guarding the house can be dangerous. The reason why they want you in there is because it's dangerous, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. Okay, so so the biggies are accommodation. Have that number in mind. Uh, the meals. Have the cash in your pocket. No more. The number in the mind again. Uh, transportation, obviously, public. That, that's just the way to go. It's easy to do. Um, any other expenses that you encounter? Like, what about sort of? Obviously, you can't buy a lot of souvenirs because you don't have bags. Um, um, I'm. I mean, truthfully, I do buy a lot of like, gadgets and knickknacks. I buy things for like fifty cents a lot. Okay. And a fifty cent purchase is just about as fun as a five hundred dollar purchase. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so if you really feel like buying something, go buy something. Yeah, yeah. buy small. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and I buy a lot of things that I can play with, right? I mean, uh, I I download all my movies from torrents, and I download all my yeah. books from things. So now yeah. I got a, I got a Kindle, and I I I have three thousand books at it, right? Jeez. <laughs> I'll have to buy a book again in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's totally changed. Um, okay, what about saving now? So, like, say you're you're saving. Obviously, you're never in one location for any longer. But say I'm now here for six months, so I have to save. I'm I'm at zero now. I'm at <laughs> you know no debt, but also no savings. Uh, the good thing is the weather is is getting better. I'm I'm starting to make revenue from my my clients, new and and returning. So, any tips on saving for travel for the next six months? Well, always put your whole whole your whole check in the bank. In the in the, in the separate saving. Well, what I'm saying is, some people cash your check at the liquor store on the way home. That's not the way okay. to go. You, you deposit the check and take it out because. Then you got another threshold to cross, right? Okay, so okay, so you. Pretty cash in your pocket is always a problem. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I'm saying is, when you, any money you get, go deposit it immediately. Okay, but out of sight, don't out of mind. Don't carry it on you. Got you. But got you. You know, you're. You gotta, you gotta have a Caesar, a pause in the music, so that you think about it. Oops, I'm spending money I'm not supposed to spend. Uh huh. Uh huh. Without okay. that, that pause, the thing yeah. that makes you pause, right? Uh huh. The pause. It's interesting. Well, I, I, when I, when I reach inside my secret pockets, that's yeah, I'm getting okay. the big money. <laughs> the Velcro ripping open. <laughs> that, that means I'm going for more money than. See, I can carry my day cash in my pocket. Uh -huh. And then I'll carry my big money in the thing. I I actually will carry more than what I'm you know I'm saying. If you have, I don't have the problem actually. I don't spend more than my ten bucks. But. Right, you're obviously disciplined over the years. Well, it it just I broke I broke the habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I broke this thing that I got to buy. Mm -hmm. But. It's a problem. I mean, it's to buy things that we see, we're tempted. It's, yeah. You know, you know, when when you're buying a house or you're buying anything over a hundred dollars, you really should go home and think about it one day. Okay. I mean, I often made my clients, and when I told real estate, think about mm -hmm. it tonight. Oh, okay. They, you know, they get too excited. They're they're in a feeding frenzy, right? Right, 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 right. And they want to make an offer, and if the offer got accepted, it's pretty serious. Yeah. One night, so, I don't kill you. Mm -hmm. So what the, that pause could be like if you're at a store and you, you feel like emotions running. That pause is just to to just stop. Hey, let's just think about this for a second. Uh, if anything over a hundred dollars, if you think about it for for one one day. One night. Okay. You got your pause okay. right, and then you really need yeah. you need it right. Yeah, yeah. But if you're just doing a spontaneous purchase, it's tough, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. Uh, you're gonna say when you're buying things. Let me let me tell you this. When when I'm buying things, mm -hmm. 
you've got the retail world, the real world, Walmart, and you got the mm -hmm. Amazon and eBay, right? Yeah. They, you never know which one's going to be cheaper, right? So I just bought some thinning scissors to thin my hair so I could cut my hair. Yeah. And I get on Amazon and blah, blah, blah. I finally get it down to $7 or something with shipping included. And, yeah. And I think it's the same price in Walmart. Okay. So, Whoa. you know, you never know. You, you, you might find it. Like I was I was getting on Amazon. I want to buy these. They're screwing the light plug. You, you, you screw them into a light bulb and then you mm -hmm. put it. You can plug into the side mm -hmm. because sometimes you need. I have one upstairs, but I'm thinking about selling them on the website. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm pretty darn sure that over here at the hardware they sell them exactly the same price as on uh, eBay. So you got to be real careful because. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that you know you're using, you're testing the price. I'm always. I'm always looking for the cheapest price to buy because it's easier to make a dollar by saving it than it is actually yep. to make a dollar. Yep. Yeah. So much easier to cut one dollar out of your budget than to make one dollar. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I mean, making that dollar overseas, especially. Re really, huh? Really tough, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> you know, you. So if you can save a dollar, you look at. I look at it as two dollars. Got you. Okay. So just saving a dollar is two dollars, and I said making, making a dollar is you know, mm -hmm. tough. But you you know you're really making, it's focusing on save making savings, and you got to be careful though. Don't be cheap, Charlie. I mean, people get really um, <laughs> when you're with your American friends, especially. You got to be real careful if you're cutting your cash, because. Uh, being cheap in any culture is considered a, like an insult. So mm -hmm. don't just don't talk about what you're doing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> they don't care if you don't spend money, but talking about it. <laughs> yeah. But a girl, a girlfriend that spends your money will. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. <laughs> you, know, you can almost the minute that looking at things and trying to get you to buy. That's the wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> I can spot those a mile away. <laughs> yeah, well, you get, we get good at it, especially living abroad. Well, yeah. The girls yeah. In Jamaica, were there a lot of girls there? I'm sorry. Were, were the girls in Jamaica nice? I mean, was it you know, girl friendly? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I well, like, uh, I to be honest, I wasn't really attracted to the tourist type. Well, number one, a lot of them were, were coupled up. They're, you know, they go to Jamaica. Sure. You know. Honeymoon, whatever, and and then the other type were sort of like the party girl type, and you know, and like as soon as I see like a tattoo, it just it totally turns me off, and <laughs> and if they're just walking around, like I'm I'm really not turned on by that. So so and and most most tourists are from America or Canada, um, and so you know, I wasn't really into that crowd, uh, and then local girls, you know, I, I definitely found a lot of them attractive. <laughs> um, but I don't know, just the cultural difference in getting involved in a relationship, I, I wasn't too interested in. I was more or less just wanting to admire their beauty and, and you know, you can have a little flirting and stuff like that, but I, I wasn't really interested in, in hooking up. Um, even though I think you, it would be fairly easy, um, you know, if you wanted a local girl, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> well, um, it's always nice when you have a normal life, right? You have yeah, I mean, I, I was not... Yeah, I mean, when you're in an Islamic country, talk to the boys about London football, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really boring. I mean, when you're sitting there, all you're talking to is the guys, and all they want to talk about is, you know, all the football teams in London, in England. Yeah, I don't, I don't hang around with that crowd at all either. So, it's like. Most of the girls I see, I don't really, uh, I, you know, they might be might be beautiful, might be attractive, but I, I don't relate to them. And a lot of the guys, it's like I just don't relate to you either. Sorry. <laughs> hey, on the budget thing, um, yeah, I don't know if you know it, but in uh, in most countries, it's almost impossible to buy new clothing. So I got almost addicted to buying these used clothes. Used uh, abroad? Yeah, but I also even now I go to the Salvation Army and I. 
I don't think I have any piece of clothing that I bought new. <laughs> okay. So abroad, I thought I thought it was hard to get used stuff abroad. Oh, it's easy to get abroad. It's hard to get it at home. I mean, but oh, okay. We we got we call we call those things pockets. We call them pockets, and we'd actually go on tours of the pockets in Magalatalan. I mean, no way. Two or three of us would go around. We were going to even have a fashion contest. Who could buy the nicest pocket clothes? Okay. <laughs> Paca means pack, like uh, a pack. bundle. They come in big bundles. They they bundle them up. You know, these things that you donate here, they put them in a big bundle, then they put them in a pack, and then they send them abroad. Oh, so these are used clothes from the West. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, my oh. girlfriend, Ba, she, I was giving her $5 a week to go spend on, uh, in Africa, and she was coming back with incredibly expensive European clothes. She had a good eye for clothing. No I'm way. Going, Whoa. I mean, every week, please, go buy. <laughs> Wow, wow. Because he was coming back with just, you know, shirts and stuff that were $100. I mean, she, yes. In, in Africa, they, they kind of dress tacky, so everybody buys tacky. Well, she oh, yeah, yeah. Buying the good stuff. Yeah. But she, well, the girls the girls in West Africa are like really stylish. Like the French, you know, the French, like Dakar and those places, like really, like I was blown away when I saw like, and just the way they walk, it's, it's very different from... Um, black, uh, Caribbean, or or American, or Canadian. <laughs> frumpy, frumpy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I almost only buy uh, used clothing, and uh, I'm getting pretty good. I even I, I realized in, in Togo I could buy shirts with long sleeves and then take them to the thing and have them shortened. Ta tailor, tailor, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I take the collars and I make them into a banded collar <laughs> to make them... This one's not been done to, but I'll take them, make them yeah. into a banded collar, and they're they're cooler. Yep, yeah, yeah. But uh, anywhere, I was buying a pair of pants every day of the week and uh, shorts and uh, I go out to London until I got the shorts I loved. Yeah. <laughs> I come, I just take them back and give them. Yeah. A, they were like a dollar a piece. Wow. I, I bought, you know, in America you can go to the Salvation Army. I bought a, I bought a Disneyland shirt last week. What was that? Mm -hmm. Five dollars or four dollars, and it was, uh, you know, probably an eighty dollars shirt. Okay. But I mean, I like to look nice, but I'm not willing. To, what's nice with the used clothing is that if it doesn't fit, you don't care. You can just you can just leave it, chuck it, donate it. Yeah. But yeah. You know, I I never even thought about it until I left the United States. I just really had no choice. I had to buy new clothing. The first pair of pants I ever bought, I bought some shirts in Guatemala like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Go behind this building. Even they had a big pile of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Hmm. But you can see, I, I, I buy all my medicine abroad. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I got sick here and I had... Uh, I had this antibiotic, and my nose was swollen up and stuff, and I saved myself 120 bucks or something probably, right? Whatever yep. the med would be in the medicine, so maybe $200. Yeah. Yep. I had to. I mean, it was really infected. But, you know, get stock up when you're outside the country on medicine. Mm -hmm. well, so there's, far, I've, there's I haven't had to. You can, there's countries where you can stock up. Like, mm -hmm. Thailand's always good. Okay. Okay. And uh, I mean, let's see, where would be really good? Um, I know Mexico was good when, on, when I was on the cruise ship working. Um, all the guests would go off and you know, where's the pharmacy? Where's the pharmacy? <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to figure out what type of medicine. I mean, I, I antibiotic creams. Uh, sure. You know, antibiotics, right? And no. I get sinus medicines, yeah. things that you take, anything you take, you can buy, you know. So that's not back to the principle, though, is you, you can save save money quicker than you can make money. Yeah. When you're walking around and you buy something and anything seems to be – I had a guy in business one time say, he says, I don't care how much I pay for one item. It's something I buy every day of the week. I – I beat it down, like water. I'm always trying to find a way to get water cheaper. Ah, uh, okay. And water's a big expense. So yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And I I got on the thing, try to figure out these membrane type things. I've never figured out a way. Mm-hmm. I boil the water a lot. I'm trying to. I'm really trying to get it so that the water tastes good. I'm not worried about drinking boiled water, but sometimes it just don't yeah. taste, taste good. That's yeah, yeah. It's too bad there isn't such a thing as like a, a light um, portable distiller. You know, where you can have pure H2O. You know, absolutely well, pure. If you could distill it, if I could. Nah, I just never came up. I mean, but generally, when you're buying water, look for the five-gallon container. The big ones, yeah. If they got them around, it's going to really, I mean, in like the Dominican Republic where I was, in Mexico where I was, many, mm. many places, I'll actually just buy the five gallon, you know, I'll carry it home and it costs okay. a dollar as opposed to a dollar a bottle or something. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, no, the, that little ones can add up. Um, okay, so that really helps with budgeting and saving. Now, for thinking about my next six months, which will be starting in like uh, end of November. I'm trying to get to, to mid, mid-May again. Um, I have a couple of places in mind just because um, yeah, there's a p- potential to work there. Like um, I have a friend who's teaching in, in Dubai, uh, another one in Singapore, and I have a third one in, in Hong Kong. <laughs> and those are all like really – like that's where the money is for, for tennis coaches. You know, I find the Caribbean I – mean, you just get you just like pocket money basically. Yeah. It wasn't much. And even America, I, th- I think it's it's not really – they don't value the lesson, whereas the Asian, Middle Eastern culture, all the expats who they, you know, they have nothing to do. They're making big salaries. They want to meet people. So I think it's like um, a social way to get fit and it's fun. So any thoughts on those three locations? I've, all, I've been to all three just for a day on the cruise ship, but like – actually trying to to settle in there do you have any thoughts well if i got a place in dubai i'd probably want to make sure i i organized my room and board <laughs> right right yeah all three uh, are kind of expensive singapore the cost of living in singapore is a lot about double hong kong double hong kong okay. or triple wow i mean you can live really cheap in hong kong it's pretty hard to live real cheap in singapore so, like people who were like working like service jobs in Singapore, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have cheap places to live, like rent a room somewhere or. Yeah, but there is. I mean, there's you know, it's a lot of Chinese there, but I mean, nah, it, it's a pretty tough place. I mean, I. Oh, I I'm gonna have to go. My my mom wants me to go to the post office. Um, oh, okay. in, yeah, yeah. In, uh, yeah. Um, If, if any way I had a choice, I would recommend you go to Hong Kong first before Singapore. But the Singapore is according to your culture shock, right? Singapore is just like America, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's real modern, I, I, very clean. China, uh, well, Hong Kong's full on in your face, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Well, what I liked about Singapore is there's more green space, and it's close to like Malaysia, where you can you can you know you can so, get out. There. And well, when you're moving to budget, you're not moving countries. You're moving hotels. Hotel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you stay okay. You're moving hotels. If you if you focus okay. on the country, it's too nebulous, right? You got yeah, to, yeah. 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 What yeah. hotel am I going to? Right. 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 Okay. So if you can find, you know, you you got two variables here. You got the cost of the airfare and the um, the room, right? So the room. So uh-huh. what you can do is you can put a, like a a, like I get on Sky Scanner and put these alerts that I put round yeah. trip Toronto, think yeah. three different dates, and then I put round trip Singapore, whatever, and then I figure out or whatever, and then I yeah. I would uh, start to figure out which plane fare is going to be the cheapest, and then I start looking for that room that's uh, by the month, right? I mean, the expat situation in I mean. The quality of life, I mean, I, I would think, I, I'm not sure on Asia, but I mean, t- I would think there'd be much more people in Singapore that would want to take tennis lessons. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Like, like, there might be many, many teachers, right? That's true, too. That's true, too, yeah. But I, I see, like, uh, on uh, job posts, you know, um, 
you know, where you can apply in advance, but I'm just thinking you may not get the best deal of the situation unless you go there and meet the people and you can negotiate in person. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? You know, um, but it wouldn't be hard. It, you know, the, just the, the price between Singapore and Hong Kong is probably 100 bucks. Oh, the, the, the airfare? Yeah, I mean, you can bounce between okay. those two places like what? Okay, okay. I mean, I think there's two or three different uh, Tiger Air probably. Tiger Air. Flights. Okay. You get on Tiger yeah. Air. That's an Australian airline, I think. Maybe I'm not sure, but there's you know, there's a ton of uh, low cost airlines between those places. Okay. So what what I was thinking. Uh, by the way, if you have to go, uh, we can another time. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go. I gotta get to the post office before it closes. Okay. So maybe I'll finish up on this part um, another time. But uh, I think you could actually, if you wanted to, um, Singapore is going to be the more expensive place. But uh, you know, you could think of an open jaw ticket where you enter Singapore and leave from Hong Kong even. But okay, uh, okay. The, the price to fly between these two places isn't probably more than a hundred dollars. It's not much. Yeah. You got to yeah. be careful with the baggage though, because in low cost area, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I travel pretty, pretty light. Yeah, they can bang you, away. But I think yeah. even a uh, nah, you can't get to Hong Kong by train. But the, yeah. the trip, the trip from Singapore all the way to oh, where would you go to? You can get all the way by land, all the way to Hong Kong, uh, Hanoi, Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah, yeah. But, like places, like, like if I had enough saved, um, like going straight to place like Thailand would be ideal just to, to hang out, maybe, maybe do YouTube videos or um, work on some online business. But if I didn't have quite enough to last me, I, I was thinking, you know, be close to a place where you can have an employment prospect. Well, getting from Thailand to Singapore is like, you can get on the night train, I think. Really? Just overnight? Yeah, I think the train goes strictly all the way there. I know you can go by bus. Did I take the bus all the way to Singapore? No, I always train. I'm never. I'm not big on Malaysia, so uh -huh. I always kind of jumped it. But I mean, you know, it's like a fifty dollar plane ticket with tire. Um, whatever. Yeah, about fifteen minutes. I gotta go. My mom's talking okay. to me. <laughs> All right, Eddie. Nice chatting. Yeah. Bye. Talk to you later. Yeah.